And we're set. Go ahead. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about hypothermia in cats. Um, I've worked at a vet clinic for the last six years, and we've seen a lot of different cases of it. And I'm talking about one specific case today, so that's why I'm focusing on cats. Um, but I'll give a little bit of information about dogs, too. So what is hypothermia? Definition is the condition of having an extremely low body temperature. In dogs, it's lower than 99 degrees Fahrenheit, and in cats, it's lower than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, then there goes into two different stages. So there's primary versus secondary hypothermia. Primary hypothermia is when hypothermia is affected by your environment. So if a cat or a dog is outside in the snow for too long, they get hypothermia. Whereas secondary hypothermia is caused by an illness or an injury or, for instance, anesthesia. So when animals are in surgery and their uh, body temperature gets too low, it's because of secondary hypothermia. And then we have, um, specifically in cats, moderate versus severe hypothermia. Moderate is 82 to 90 degrees, and then severe is less than 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So let, we're going to talk about um, a specific instance of hypothermia. When people go outside and find cats or dogs in the snow or out in really cold temperatures, especially in rainy, wet, rainy cold temperatures, hypothermia is really common to occur then. Um, so what happens when you find an animal that's you know, outside cold, needs a, immediate care, make sure to put them in a warm and dry environment. The thing that people do most when they find hypothermic animals is they try to put them on a heating pad really fast and you know, put the heating pad on high. That's probably one of the worst things you can do. Um, you can burn their skin very easily and it kind of shocks their system too fast because if their temperature is too low and you're putting them in an area where the temperature is too high, it can cause a lot of issues. So we kind of always recommend just lots of blankets. Um, hot water bottles, or what people do is fill up medical gloves with warm water, I call them warmies, um, and put them around the animal, or hot water bottles, you can microwave a bottle of water. But a lot of people don't have hot water bottles, so it's kind of neat to right. the gloves, yeah, mm -hmm. good idea. Um, and then make sure that you're monitoring the rectal temperature. Here's information on the right, that the normal temperature for cats is around 100 and 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then when you're looking for a heart rate, it's pretty easy. You can feel, what I do is I feel for six seconds, count the number of heartbeats, and then multiply by 10. And then there's your heartbeats per minute. Um, and then respirations as well. You can kind of count for six seconds, multiply by 10, and that's your 60 seconds worth. And then make sure that you're taking them to a veterinary clinic as soon as possible. So I'm gonna talk about a kitten that I encountered um, last winter named Olaf. Um, a client brought him in in a box. He was driving down the road and found him laying in the snow and wanted to help him. So Olaf came to us limp, um, not responding to any stimuli. He was so cold that his temperature didn't read on a thermometer, and I'm pretty sure that our thermometer goes down to 50 or 60 degrees. So that was sad in itself. Um, his breathing was very shallow. His heart rate was almost not even there, and he was blind, which was very interesting to me. Um, but when you think about it, hypothermia, it's affecting all of the organs. So everything is shutting down to the point where they just, the body wants to focus on the heart and the you know, blood pumping through the body. So everything else is shutting down so that it can focus on the heart. So they put me in charge of Olaf for the rest of the day. And I took his temperature every 15 minutes. I kept him in a cage specifically with blankets and I put a heating pad under him on low. Um, with a blanket in between so that it didn't burn his skin because he was so small. Um, I took his heart rate and his blood pressure every 15 minutes as well and over that, you know, over the hours of that evening um, it slowly went up which was really happy, <laughs> made me happy. And then the um, warmies, and if you could see that previous picture, I have one right next to him right here. It's a warm glove with hot water in it and then there were more around him but we had him wrapped up. And then, so there's something that we do, it's called acute core rewarming, which can be a little bit more effective than just a heating pad. So you put subcute fluids in his body, and that just kind of goes everywhere. We put sucrose in him just because his BG was insanely low, and we needed to just kind of and get BG him is blood glucose. Yeah, just um, we wanted to, you know, get his body started back up again, so we put some sucrose and sugar in there for him. And then another thing we can do is we have an oxygen cage, and so you can run warm oxygen through the cage. It's all sealed off, and that helps to get some warm um, air into the system. 
And then once his temperature finally was able to read on the thermometer, <laughs> and it came to a little, you know, that like severe hypothermic level, that 82 degrees, um, I hand fed him this critical care diet. It's really bland. It's called AD. Um, and he wouldn't take it. He would. I would put it in front of him, and he could smell it, but he couldn't see anything. Still, he was still blind, and I was, you know, figured that he wasn't going to regain any sight after that. Uh, so I would, you know, feed him with my hand, and he ate it. But he was just too weak to lift his head up. So we just kind of went really slow with him because forcing too much would kind of shock him as well. But in the end, he turned back into his normal kittenish self. Um, he regained his sight. He the next day ate on his own. His vitals normalized, and then he ended up becoming adopted, which was happy ending of the story. What a success story! Yes, um, the thing was, we were very nervous because the cl this clinic that I worked at wasn't a 24-hour <coughs> clinic, so um, nobody was available to take him home that evening. I couldn't take him home, so we kind of were just like crossing our fingers, mm -hmm. hoping to show up the next morning to him alive, and there he was. So that was awesome to see, but. Just for prevention, one minute. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, one quick thing, prevention-wise, make sure that you're keeping your animals indoor during colder months. A lot of people think that you know their feet are a lot more thick and durable than our feet are, or anything, but it's not like that. They're very sensitive on their pads. Um, I know that there's a lot of people that have outdoor cats, but if you're going to have an outdoor cat, make sure that there's dry and insulated bedding off the ground for them, like with hay in it is good. Um, and then older cats and younger kittens are the most acceptable to. I think we had a question here or a comment. Yes. Um, so when I had um, my bird, uh, I worked with a bird rehabilitation thing over the summer, and we would get uh, little baby birds, and we have to watch their temperature, and if they even felt cold to us or not warm. Um, as far as feeding, we would like wait a bit and then do like liquid feeding and then solids once the temperature started to rise. Is that similar to what you guys would do? Yeah, the only thing with this is since he was a kitten, we didn't feed him solid food just because he was used to wet food at the time. Um, but I think that wet food just kind of was better for his system. But yeah, eventually you can start mixing in the different types of food. But you got to start but out slow. Yeah, you very just, slow. It's kind of like what you were saying with the shock. You don't want to warm them up too fast. Mm -hmm. If you've ever seen a real starving dog, you've seen these pictures where some... The worst thing you can do is give it a lot of food. Mm -hmm. You start with frequent little meals. Okay. Excellent. Let's have the last.